Hey guys, this is Joshua Peterson with Peterson Electric. Uh, this is going to be mid-May of 2022 for my SEO guy and you guys. This is going to be how do I know if my detached garage has enough power for a level two charger? Uh, it's always a missed verbiage when I hear on the phone um, that the sales guy said I need a dryer plug and it's a level two. That's incorrect. I will stand all day every day with every salesman and say that's incorrect. What you need to say is I need a range plug, right? And that's gonna be a 50 amp rated four wire for most electric cars. Some have a three wire, very seldom, just like on a Sundance hot tub. Um, but it's gonna be typically in that eight to six gauge wire rating, unless it's a level one, it could be a four gauge. Um, and level one is gonna be that pretty much like a Tesla capsule that can adjust to its highest ampacity rating to charge faster. Um, so keeping in mind with that, some of the capsules are actually rated for outdoor to be screwed onto the wall and some are not. You have to see the verbiage in the literature, not just say, I think I'm gonna buy this one and I'm not sure. We really gotta know if that's the way we're bidding it. Um, the other thing you gotta keep in mind is um, when we're wiring those up, some of them do not have GFI protection, most of them. Uh, the only one that I'm aware of at this date is gonna be the um, the Tesla. I've wired up Volvo, BMW, Nissan, um, Honda, uh, you name about any brand, I pretty much wired it, except for the new Rivian. That, that'll be next, I'm assuming. But so keeping in mind, when I come to look at a garage, um, here's what I, I, I did here, first of all. So Grizzly is one of them at a third party you can get. It does not Wi-Fi, but it's a couple hundred dollars cheaper. Um, this is the first one I put in in 16 years. Um, but it basically was reconditioned. So if you wanted to look also at Cripple Creek Siemens or Juice Box, and then there's another one that I always forget the name to, but there's a bunch of them out there. Um, if the Wi-Fi option, it's great because you can set it up that you can turn it on at 10 p.m. and turn it off at whatever it needs, four or five hours at uh, 3 a.m. or it'll turn off itself. But when it starts to charge, it deprivates that last couple hours for most electric cars. Um, keeping in mind with that, a lot of people call me up and say, I need 240. And I'm like, oh, okay, 240 what? 240 volt? Yeah. Okay, well, most of the time, normally, it's either 120, which is one leg in neutral, or 240. I have my gloves on, by the way. So if it's two legs, it's 240. That's just the voltage. That doesn't mean anything to me. It does a little, but really what I want to know is how much power are you using, the kilowatt rating. And so they'll tell me a 6KW, which if you go back to uh, ninth grade, it will take off three zeros in your uh, equation there and it'll be into the thousands. So we call it 6,000 watts, but the, the general nominal term, the slang of it is 6KW or 7.2KW. But the rating of that is what we need to know in order to know how to wire that. Now, this guy called me up and said, can you come out and take a look? I said, sure. So I looked at it and the first thing I looked at in the panel was, oh, look, that's a 10 gauge wire. Well, that's only really rated for that level three. And that was the old school leaf back in the day, probably four years ago. This guy's got an older bolt, Chevy bolt. Those aren't made anymore to my awareness. But see right here, this is three prong. And so, this, if you said, oh, I'm gonna turn that into a four prong. Well, typically you need four wires. So sometimes we can't even do that or we'd have to push through, you know, a neutral two. Uh, so one of these right here, that one it is, it doesn't have the neutral where the other one did there, okay? And that I didn't pipe in, that was already there. We do like to put on a whole house surge protection device, article 242 under SPD. And we like to have that near our electrical charge station because you are acting like an electrical gas station for yourself. So we like to make sure that manages well. When I came out here, the first thing I wanted to look at was what is the size of wire feeding this panel? Well, this panel right here was not fed with something small, which 90% of them are with a detached garage, even to this day. And you say, well, why is that? Well, I'll tell you why that is, because the IRC code did not change until at least two, three months ago now. And they basically state that you have to have a raceway separately done out to a garage. Now, did they state the diameter of the raceway? Probably not. They're not that smart. But the bottom line is, is you're going to want at least to have a one to inch and a quarter PVC going out there, depending on how many bends. We can't have more than 90 degree, 490 degree bends, 360 degrees on a raceway. Usually, it's still difficult to pull through. 
um, we'll have to trench out to it. So somebody back about 20 years ago already did this. And they did, and I checked it out on both sides. I'll show you that in a minute. But the bottom line is this garage we got called out to had all of these plugs in here and nothing was grounded. So we went ahead and extended all the grounds and put them together and then installed our GFI protection. That was what we were called for the inspections report. So there's our GFI now to this that grounded. There's a GFI over here that slaves down load all the, to those that ground it. Okay, so we got that fixed. The other thing that we were going to look at is that we decided to run a separate ground wire to this bus bar. This does have a ground wire going to the house, so there's no difference in equal potential. That is very important. I do say, listen, if there's nothing been here, I'll show you this. There wasn't anything in the first place. So right out here, we drove a ground rod. And over here, we just got radon put in and they didn't have a plug. So we went through the crawl space and put in a wet proof GFI plug. Over here today, we put in a ground rod, inner system bonding bridge bar, and then over here we've cut in the slip conduit, and then put in a ground wire into that meter. When I called the meter department, they let me do that because they had nothing. But that was pulling off the box, so we put that in two. So keeping in mind, um, going out there, let me show you this. They actually already had a six gauge wire going out now they had romix underground which hasn't been allowed for a little while now but it's in a conduit that i could tell if it's not in a conduit it's not going to last in a piece of romix in the ground might get 20 years if you're lucky but see somebody retrenched it to that lb to the crawl space to this lb and so that's where that would have to be cut apart. So if you're looking at doing your sidewalk, that's a good time to get it in before the cement guys. But most garages only have two wires coming out and they might have a 10 gauge if you're lucky or they're gonna have a 12-2 UF, which is two hots. The code states though, anytime you bring out two circuits to a detached building, it has to have at least minimum of a 30 amp disconnect, 30 amp wire size two. Um, so basically you can have a toggle switch or an AC disconnect or a GFI protection, whatever. This has up to a 60 amp breaker at six gauge. So this panel has been decently put in from 10 years ago. It looks like to me, but the conduit may be cut in. This was its old sub panel that they pulled out the little breakers and then nippled through here to come into here. So anyways, guys, yeah, so this is what I'm looking at when I get there. If you're taking pictures for, for me, it's really helpful to take them from the far back corner, open your garage, snap, and then I can draw on there like I do and give you a general price, um, and then going out and down. But yeah, a lot of them are a little bit more specific, but if you come over, if you don't feel comfortable taking off the screws, I understand, but you're not going to normally get hurt. You should have gloves on. But taking a picture snap like that, I can kind of look through on my phone what it is you have. Sometimes those I have to drive out to, but then I could be two weeks out to give you a price. Um, so plan ahead. It's busy here in Colorado. Don't forget that. Anyways, guys, hopefully that can help you out with a lot of the detail we did here today for these guys. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks. Give us a call.